So we know our plants need food and we've come to the nursery to buy that fertilizer. Now our soil report says we need nitrogen, but nothing says nitrogen on it. There's so many numbers and formulas and different names. There's blood meal, there's bone meal, there's sulfate. It gets to a point where you start looking at the pictures. This has roses on it, so I guess this is what I need for my roses. This has tomatoes on it, so I guess this is what I need for my tomatoes. Sometimes you just need to go to the experts. So if you remember, we took a soil test earlier in the garden and we've got those results back. And joining me today is Dr. Hyland Zhang, who is the director of the Soil Testing Lab and also a soil nutrition specialist here on campus. Dr. Zhang, thank you for joining me. Well, my pleasure to be here. We wanted to walk the homeowner through what it means to get a soil report back and what this means. Um, our test shows that we have a pH, our NPK, and then also our organic matter that we'll talk about later. But let's talk about the NPK and the, the micronutrients first. It says we're deficient in nitrogen. What does that mean and what should that level be at? Well, uh, first of all, um, I'm glad you took the first step, get the soil tested. Uh, however, a lot of homeowners need to do that as well. Because without soil test, how do you know what kind of fertilizer to buy? You're wasting money, you probably have done some harm to the environment, or even your soil, mm -hmm. okay? So nitrogen is very important. We do not want to build up to a high level. Otherwise, they just get leached into groundwater or get uh, uh, wa rivers. Nitrogen's water soluble. Yes. So it will quickly mm -hmm. wash out with rainfall and irrigation. You're right. So basically, we try to spoon feed our plants, apply small amount in multiple times. And then this soil test report tells you you need about uh, roughly one pound of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet. Okay. 1,000 square feet is about 32 feet by 32 feet. So you need to have a rough idea about the area you're going to fertilize it. Okay. And what about phosphorus and potassium? It shows that we have plenty of that. Well, because uh, you have been gardening here for a long time, mm -hmm. and then you use a lot of fertilizer, this is the same case for many homeowners, okay? Phosphorus does not move like nitrogen, so if you apply more, they just build up in the soil, okay? okay. Eventually to a very high level. According to our calibration, all you need is 65 on a soil test level. Okay. When you get above that, you are just uh, like an uh, oil in the crankcase will spill around. Okay. Potassium is similar to phosphorus. It does not uh, uh, leach as easy as nitrogen. We want to get up to 300 for lawn and gardens. Ideally, you should test your soil every time you fertilize it, but for a lawn and garden or homeowners, maybe every other year, at least once every three years is needed okay. to make sure you are right uh, on the mark in and, terms of nutrients. And what does uh, NPK mean? Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. What are those actually doing for our plants? Well, uh, there are 16 nutrients needed uh, for plant to grow. Mm -hmm. NPK are the most important because plants need a large quantity. Uh, our soil typically do not supply enough. Okay, all of them are important, like nitrogen. It keeps the plant grow, give the green color. Uh, if you don't have enough nitrogen, it will turn yellow, like this plant right here. This is probably not, not nitrogen deficiency, but uh, some other plants will show some symptom like that. Right. Okay. Phosphorus and potassium are very important for flowering or fruit setting, and disease resistance. If you do not have enough potassium phosphorus in the soil, the plant uh, will not uh, uh, do very well, like uh, not have a vibrant uh, uh, blooming or have a lot of fruits like pecan. Okay, potassium maybe help uh, build a resistance to disease and the insects. Okay, and so that's why, because nitrogen is responsible for the green foliage and things like that, that's why a lot of times we see, you know, urea being applied to our lawn is because we want green grass. And then things like this that are marketed for, you know, blooming have mm -hmm. a high phosphorus level. Uh, 
Exactly. There are so many different uh, fertilizers in the, on the market, but keep in mind these three elements, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Okay, some fertilizers contain all three, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Those are the percentage of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium in the bag. Okay. So if, if my report says that I have plenty of phosphorus and potassium, all I need is to find something that has nitrogen in it. Exactly. If your soil test P reaches 65, potassium already 300 or higher, you don't use this fertilizer. Okay. It's a wrong fertilizer to use. Okay. You, you should use urea. Urea is nitrogen only. It has 45% of nitrogen in it. Okay. It's the highest uh, percentage of uh, nitrogen fertilizer available. So like uh, in a long case, you don't um, harvest any fruits or don't have any flowers. This is a good fertilizer. Okay. As long as the phosphorus potassium is in a, at Which a reasonable is level. somewhat typical in Oklahoma soils that we have plenty of phosphorus and potassium, is that correct? That's right, especially for mature lawn and gardens. And we have done a lot of uh, summary. Our garden lawn soil phosphorus potassium are very high. Most homeowners probably just need nitrogen. Okay. Maybe in the early stage need a little bit of phosphorus and potassium. Okay. But if the soil test is showing you need all three of these nutrients, then you go out and buy the fertilizer with all three. Okay. And, and in fact, sometimes people think more is better, but you can actually be doing not only environmental damage and paying out of your pocket for something that you don't need, but you can mm -hmm. actually cause diseases in a lot of plants by over-fertilizing. Sure, uh, like a phosphorus, 65 is the adequate. You know, one of your reports has a phosphorus like 2,000. Yeah, it's a little high. <laughs> so you have enough phosphorus for the next 20, 30 years. We're good, okay. okay? Now, this additional phosphorus in the soil can tie up some micronutrients we didn't talk about. Right. So make it them less available. Also, this phosphorus will leach into uh, groundwater, uh, sometimes get into runoff, get in a pond, and then trigger algal bloom. When right. the algae dies, use a lot of oxygen, then you have a fish kill in the summertime. So there are many, many consequences. Like nitrogen, if you apply too much to a lawn, the winter hardiness will be weakened. So you may have a winter kill. Or if you grow tomato plants, you put a lot of nitrogen, your plant looks like a giant tree and you can't any, find any tomato there because okay. uh, you have a too good vegetative growth, not enough reproductive growth. So knowing your plants, and also you mentioned this dogwood, mm -hmm. although it looks chlorotic behind mm -hmm. us, it's actually a cultivar that is supposed to be mm -hmm. that chartreuse yellow, as you know. And so it's important to also always know your plants and know what nutrients they need. Mm -hmm. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.